Hello, hello, hello. I'm back again. Your main main, the real Bill Real. Now, I know y'all been wondering, where did the real Bill Real go? What happened to him? Last we heard, he said that he had lost his gossip mojo. Well, since the last time I made a video, I have become a child of God. I go to church every Sunday, and I open up my Bible every day, and I give God thanks for everything that he has done for me and my family. So I just want y'all to know that it's been a while because I have just been deciding that I'm like, I'm not going to speak on any of this foolishness. I'm not going to speak about that person. I'm not going to speak about this. But I feel that I need to do what I'm doing. So with all that said, let me go ahead and get into the meat of what I'm going to talk about. And y'all already know what I'm about to say. Because it's programmed in your mind like it's programmed in everybody's mind around here. Unless you're living up under a rock. And that's this nonsense that has been perpetuated by our media and our so-called black leaders. Irrelevant Al Sharpton. Irrelevant, Jesse Jackson, the irrelevant NAACP, the irrelevant Urban League, and every single brother, and you know who you are, who is race baiting and acting as if this is a reason for black people to have a race war. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about this Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman crap that's been going on in the media. This is what brought the real Bill Real out. This nonsense. I have to speak on it. And I must speak on it in a way that everybody can understand what I am saying. When the story first broke, it was a story I think that came on about, uh, I say a day after the All-Star break. When I heard about it, I first thought to myself, this shooting happened as the basketball game was going on. The all-star basketball game was going on. In my mind, I drew some type of correlation between it. The shooting, the game, sacrifice for a win. That's what my mind said to me. A couple weeks later, I see the petition for the arrest and prosecution of George Zimmerman for the killing of Trayvon Martin. So, of course, I could relate to racial profiling. I could relate to young black men being killed and nobody caring. I can relate to police corruption. I could relate to the urgency of the parents for someone to do something to write what seemed to be an egregious wrong. 
But what I have begun to realize about this case is that this case is not what is made out to be. Please understand me. It is a tragedy anytime that a parent has to bury their own child. When you're 17 years old, you should be thinking about what college you're going to go to. You should be thinking about a car. You should be thinking about a job. You should be thinking about prom. These are the things that a 17-year-old should be thinking about. So I can understand the despair and the brokenheartedness that his parents must have felt and are continuing to feel each day. But the more evidence has come out, the more awareness has come out, has made me realize that we've been duped. Yes, I said it. We have been duped. We were given a picture of George Zimmerman looking rather angry. We were given a narrative that told us that poor little sweet Trayvon was just walking in the rain, minding his business, and he was just hunted down like a rabbit dog and shot. The more you begin to read into this situation, the more you begin to realize that from the 911 calls and from the physical evidence and from the eyewitness testimony and from the paramedics and from the police, it doesn't add up. Now, you can call me crazy, Uncle Tom. You can call me whatever you want to call me. I'm just saying for the record, if this is a situation where the child was hunted down, profiled, shot while this man was in a racial rage, I would say yes. He deserves second degree murder, life in prison. But this is not the case. We have a law in the state of Florida that says you don't have to retreat if you're being attacked. If you have the ability and the right to carry a concealed weapon, a firearm, a gun for your own protection in the event that someone is kicking your ass and you are dazed and you are a few punches from being rendered unconscious. You can take out your gun and shoot. In self defense. Black people understand this. It's not about a hoodie, it's not about Skittles, it's not about tea, it's not about racism. So stop worshiping what the media has told you to worship. I don't know this kid. So why do I want to be like him? From what it sounds like to me, 
at the time of his death, he was attacking somebody. So why do I want to have my son dress up looking like him? It makes absolutely no sense, people. We're always talking about racism, racism. And I want to talk about this Black Panther Party. This is nonsense. Justice Department, Eric Holder, why have you not stepped in and stopped this foolishness, this hate, this terrorism? Where are the real leaders? I know where the real leaders are. They're standing down because of the brotherhood. And y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't need to say anything else about that. And it's a shame that you guys are allowing this racial fervor to build and grow day by day when you can simply come out and say, hey, guys, we need to just sit back, let all the facts get in, and we need to let justice work. We need, to, we need to allow him the same rights that you want. Due process. We need to stop this foolishness talking about lynch mobs, bounties on the heads of people. This is America. What have we come to where we're allowing this? Are we that deceived? Are we that foolish? To be told when we need to get angry, when we need to riot and burn down our neighborhoods, which does us no good, which allows people to implement martial law. You don't want martial law. You don't want the MPs at every intersection, random checkpoints. National ID cards, RFID chips, concentration camps. You don't want that kind of stuff. So why are you talking about a race war when you don't even have all the facts? Not to mention all of the black-on-black -black crime that nobody is talking about. We only want to focus on one case. To all of you people talking about Justice for Trayvon, you need to wait and let all the facts come out. Because I too was deceived. I thought it was a black and white situation, not meaning a, like a cultural black and white situation. I thought it was just as simple as the media had told me. This kid was minding his own business and just got shot for no reason. That's not what happened. You were told that this is a little sweet little kid. This little kid, he was barely five feet, maybe. Just 100 pounds. George Zimmerman was this big 280-pound guy. He was outweighed him by 100 pounds. That's not the case. There's some reports he was 6'2 to 6'3. He was a football player. George Zimmerman was made out to be this big, husky, angry guy. Have you seen him? Doesn't look like a big guy. Have you heard the other 911 tapes where he's not wanting to confront someone? Have you take, checked out the facts that Trayvon Martin took off and could have actually ran to the apartment where he was staying with his father and his girlfriend? Have you taken a look at the Twitter feed that was sent to him by his cousin that talks about him saying, oh, you didn't tell me that you swung on a bus driver. Suspend this for school three times, having women's jewelry, burglary tool. Every teenager smokes weed. I'm not coming down on him about that. But this is the type of kid that you're worshiping, that you got your kid wearing a T-shirt talking about he's Trayvon Martin. And the parents, 
I, I don't even want to get on the parents. I believe that these parents are mourning. But at the same time, I believe that these parents are manipulating this situation because I feel that if your child has been suspended three times and they're swinging on bus drivers, you know your son's temperament. You know what he's liable to do. That's why when I see Tracy Martin, there's a, a look on his face like he knows that the reason why his son was shot. He knows, and the mother's talking with her fake crocodile tears, talking about, he's my son, not only my son, he's your son. Come on. No, he's not my son. I empathize with you, but he's not my son. And all it is is them playing on black people who just don't know any better. Al Sharpton, playing on black people who don't know any better. Jesse Jackson, playing on black people who don't know any better. That's what makes me upset about this situation. And other people are being hurt as a result of their, their recklessness, their carelessness. Let's not even talk about Angela Corey. She is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous in her reasoning to file second degree murder charges against George Zimmerman. Absolutely ridiculous and reckless. And immoral. Didn't even put in the affidavit the injuries that were on the back of George Zimmerman's head. Didn't even put in there that he had a broken nose. Didn't put any information in there other than some made-for-TV narrative that he stalked him and he ran after him and he just, just shot him. Not even paying attention to the fact that there is a witness called John, who says that he saw the guy who had the red jacket, red sweater on, on the bottom, and there was another guy on top of him. He said, stop, that I was going inside to call 911. You have the 911 of John talking, saying that there are people in the back wrestling. And another simple fact, black folks, how many world star hip hop videos have you seen where black people are getting the crap beaten out of them? Not once, not one time have you ever heard a black person scream help in a fight. Not one time. If you're listening to this, you probably had your ass kicked. You've probably been knocked upside your head. You ever say help? Black people? Hell no. When you hear those screams on that 911 tape, they are of someone who is not black. Open up your minds. Stop being stupid. Stop allowing people to manipulate you. Stop believing what the news is telling you. They have an agenda. They want you fighting each other. They want you thinking that every white person is against you. Black people. And if you have common sense, you can know that there's nothing further than the truth than that. How many whites died to free slaves? How many whites voted for Barack Obama? It's like it's just pure lunacy. What's going on now in the media, in the newspapers? I know who's keeping it up. It's the Brotherhood who signs on and says, okay, even if we know that there's holes in your story, we're still going to go ahead with this story. Ben Crump, you're ridiculous, dude. You're ridiculous. George Zimmerman apologizes in court to the parents. I'm sorry about the loss of your son. Still kept it classy. Instead of saying your son was a freaking menace, he beat the crap out of me. I had to shoot him. He apologizes. He didn't have to do that. He was going to get a bond either way, whether or not he would have said anything or not. 
based on the fact that his daddy went and got him a real lawyer instead of those two buffoons who were put up by, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. I don't even have to say who sent them. You already know. I don't even have to speak on certain things. A freaking circus. That's what this is. A freaking circus that we're all participating in. Getting ourselves all worked up about. Instead of realizing that there's some real important issues that we need to think about. We need to be looking at this election. We need to be looking at foreign policy. We need to be looking at our, our, our monetary system. The Federal Reserve. We need to be looking at some real serious issues. The, the, these uh, different bills that have been passed about not allowing protests. These things that, that if Obamacare gets approved, okay, RFID chips. We need to be thinking about real issues here. Instead of all of this nonsense. Now, of course, I'm going to make other videos. I'm going to do other shows. I'm going to talk about other issues. But I just had to take this time today to say, put away the foolishness. Take those hoodies off. Unless you normally just wear a hoodie, take that crap off. Stop being an idiot. Think for yourself. Think objectively. Look at facts. No matter what issues that are presented to you, look at both sides. That's what wise people do. Foolish people believe the first thing that they're told, and they act on it. It's the number one way you can spot foolish people. Here we were ready to go out and get a lynch mob and everything and kill this guy and all that. Not that I was, but I'm saying as uh, figurative, figuratively, as a whole, as Americans. And then you step back and you start seeing all the facts and the evidence. It's embarrassing, really. It's embarrassing that black people have acted so foolish. Politicians, celebrities, the people that we're supposed to be looking up to, acting like idiots. Spike Lee. I know why you're not in jail. Today is April 25th, 2012. This concludes talking shit number 15. Later.